In his first speech at the U.N. General Assembly, the U.S. president described the regime as depraved and threatened to totally destroy it if necessary. Hours after the address, the State Department spokesperson sat down with NHK. She said the speech was aimed at rallying member nations to put more pressure on the North. The president, I think, is really just trying to make clear how outraged uh, the world is by the activities of Kim Jong-un and how important it is to pull the world together to get the world to put pressure on North Korea. One of the things we talk a lot here at the State Department about is the peaceful pressure campaign. She said that while the U.S. knows that people in North Korea are starving and living in terrible conditions, it's important to take money away from the regime so that it can't be used to develop weapons. And here in Japan, the family of a teenager who was abducted by North Korea says they're grateful President Trump raised the issue at the United Nations. They say it has put the case back in the spotlight. And HK World's Moshe Komata has the story. It was an unexpected mention from the U.S. president while he was railing against North Korea at the U.N. General Assembly. We know it kidnapped a sweet 13-year-old Japanese girl from a beach in her own country to enslave her as a language tutor for North Korea's spies. A world away, it took no time for the news to reach the girl's mother. It's the first time the abduction issue was mentioned at such a big international event in front of all the leaders. I was very surprised and feel thankful. Her daughter is Megumi Yokota. She was abducted by North Korean agents in 1977 when she was 13. She became a symbol for a decades-long painful issue in Japan. The Japanese government says at least 70 nationals were abducted during the 1970s and 80s. For years, their families called for the return of their loved ones. In 2002, there was a breakthrough. Japanese Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi went to Pyongyang and met with leader Kim Jong-il. He secured the release of five abductees. Megumi was not one of them. In fact, Two years later, the North handed over what it said were her remains. But DNA testing in Japan showed that claim was false. They belonged to somebody else. With renewed hope, her family continued their efforts as the years passed by. In the lead-up to this year's UN General Assembly, Megumi's brother went to Washington. My sister was abducted on her way home from school at the young age of 13. I believe that applying pressure on North Korea will lead to a resolution. In Japan, an annual rally was missing two key participants, Megumi's parents. They're in their 80s, and it's hard for them to attend rallies. Instead, they sent a video message. We are getting older, and our health isn't good. I apologize for being unable to attend the rallies. I want to see my daughter as soon as possible. Even though they feel thankful for Donald Trump's remark, they know there's only one country that has the power to let them see their daughter again, if she's still alive. The president's remark is a big chance. But North Korea is not a regular country. If it was a normal country, very little explanation would be required. But when we talk about Pyongyang, I don't know if they could understand our issue. It's been decades since Megumi Yokota was abducted. Today she would be in her early 50s, a grown woman who lived all those years away from a family that is still holding out hope she will return. Moshe Komata, NHK World, Tokyo. As a lot of talk focuses on North Korea's nuclear weapons, some 40 world leaders at the UN will be taking a step against the weapons in any country. The Latend a signing ceremony for a legally binding treaty to ban nuclear arms that was approved in July. Despite that progress, though, countries are still divided.